Cybersecurity and zero trust security in particular depend increasingly on establishing granular control over who is on your network, their role, and their privileges. For government agencies, that also means deploying more effective ways to protect users from having their passwords and credentials compromised. I'm Wyatt Cash at Scoop News Group, and here to share some of their insights on this is Darren Guccione, Chief Executive Officer at Keeper Security. Darren, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Well, let me start by asking, how is the White House executive order on cybersecurity uh, to modernize and push towards zero trust likely to reshape government IT security strategies? Well, I think zero trust is incredibly important. I think that the overall shift and reshaping is going to be pervasive and positive. I think at first I'd like to explain what zero trust is and zero trust is a pervasive security framework that manages, tracks and verifies access and security across the entire organization. When I say that, I mean every stakeholder, which would be an employee and contractor who transacts with the organization's uh, devices and systems, as well as networks. So this means every website, application, every system across every device and every location based on where uh, the perimeter is located. It could be on-prem or off-prem. Um, it also encompasses a prioritization um, to make sure that insider and outsider threats uh, are being monitored and that internal control weaknesses are captured and in essence bolstered through a zero trust framework. So it's, it's very positive. Well, next, let me ask, how is the government's willingness to allow employees to work remotely uh, likely to alter agencies' need to approach identity and multi-factor authentication? Well, a couple of things to note. So first, the entire perimeter of an organization or agency has completely changed. The perimeter has been vaporized, especially with the advent um, and onset of COVID um, through what we call distributed remote work, um, as well as you know hybrid on-prem and cloud architecture. So that entire environment has altered and shifted to a more distributed perimeterless architecture. Um, when we talk about two-factor authentication, two-factor authentication, just quite simply, is one of the most effective means to mitigate the risk of a remote attack or data breach done by a party outside of an organization or infrastructure. So it's something that I'm a huge proponent of. I think every application and system should be bolstered with two-factor authentication. And the important thing to note too about 2FA or multi-factor authentication, they're one and the same thing, um, is that the methods for 2FA have become far more elegant. So the use of biometrics as a second factor, as opposed to the conventional or traditional method of entering you know, multi-digit codes to authenticate as the second factor are now moving to the wayside. So I'm a huge proponent of it. I think it's absolutely essential. Well, and to dive a little deeper on that. So what can government agencies do um, to move toward a more human-centric cybersecurity model to you know, better equip employees to deal with the growing threat of ransomware and phishing attacks? The key is education. So it starts with pervasive ongoing education for new employees and contractors, as well as existing employees and contractors on a continuous basis. So things like phishing simulation software, um, knowing what to look for when you're transacting with anything from a text message to an email, knowing when something appears to be malicious, knowing when to click or not to click, knowing how to escalate a potential threat to the right person inside of an organization. I always say that there's an exponential difference between knowing something about something and nothing about something, right? Most employees and contractors in an agency hear about the term cybersecurity, but if they really, if you lift up the covers and say, do you really understand what this means, right? In terms of what your role in protecting the organization or the agency really is, this is the first step. And the education is just 
pervasive. You have to have it and you have to run these things at all time. You would be surprised to know that the average employee in an organization, when they're run against a phishing simulation, you would be surprised to see how widespread the risks are. The risks aren't just for you know, human resources or finance, it actually extends to IT. We've seen simulations where members of the IT team actually click a link thinking that it does belong to a bank, it does belong to a vendor, when in fact the URL that they wind up landing on is malicious. So this is really important as well in terms of the cybersecurity framework. And then lastly, Darren, um, you know, passwords and multi-factor authentication are certainly evolving forward. But at the end of the day, we are, we're not going to be moving away from passwords right away. So what steps should uh, be taken to help government employees, you know, create and manage their passwords more effectively? Okay, so to start things off, if you think about this from a metaphysical perspective, as we went from on-prem architectures to having more of a perimeterless environment where you now have this exponential increase in the number of remote devices, the number of endpoints, you have insecure home networks being used to transact on government information, right, or agency data, the need for protection or platform specific zero trust, zero knowledge frameworks and solutions is more important and critical than ever. Why? Because all of these devices through the advent and adoption of enterprise cloud or gov cloud as we call it, has also radically increased. So where you were authenticating, let's just say two years ago with 30 different applications, today you're authenticating with 150 applications on average. Each one of those applications requires unique strong credentials, right? A combination on the human side of really strong passwords, right? Security phrases, two-factor authentication. And then for DevOps teams that are managing infrastructure, all of the secrets management and all of that additional architecture has to be protected. The only way to do that effectively is through an enterprise password management solution. There is no other way to do this effectively because you're talking about, again, a perimeter for an attack that is exponentially larger than it was two years ago. Well, that certainly makes sense. Well, uh, Darren Guccione, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to share some of your insights on um, improving password security and the larger concerns in government about moving towards zero trust. You're welcome, and thank you for having me on today. Mm -hmm.